Hi, this is Leisha. I teach digitizing classes at my girlfriend's quilt shop in Logan, Utah. For more information about the quilt shop or the classes you can take there, see the link in the description below. First off, I would like to apologize for my long absence in releasing videos. I have no excuse, but I hope you will all help hold me accountable in the future and help me to help you learn more about this program. And maybe others. For today's video, we are going to continue learning about the text tools in Palette Embroidery 11. As always, don't worry if you have an older version of Palette, as some of the tools will be the same. And don't forget to like the video if you find it helpful, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to my channel so you can follow along as I post more videos. If you haven't seen my previous tutorial videos on Palette, please check those out before you watch this one. One thing I would like to address that I mentioned in the last video is when I said this. Notice that you cannot write multiple lines of text in the text field. To have multiple lines, you must create a new text field for each line. After my electrical engineer husband watched my video, he asked me if I had ever tried holding down the control key while pressing enter. I said, of course, and then I went and tried again. So it turns out I lied. You can have multiple lines of text. When you come to the end of the line, you will hold down control enter and it will take you to a new line where you can continue to write. There does not seem to be any limit to the number of lines you can have aside from the size of your embroidery field. This also means that you can use the line spacing to make adjustments to change how close or far apart these lines are, and you can use the alignment tools to adjust the look of the text as well. Notice again that this is oriented to where you clicked on the sewing fields to create your text. All of this said, I like to mix up and play around with my words, fonts, and layouts sometimes, so you might see me still using separate text fields in the future depending on the design we are working on together. Now for the new stuff. If you are following along and trying out new lines of text, let's get a new page by using the shortcut key Control N or this button. I would like to explore the rest of the text tools found in the text dropdown. This is the small text tool. Included here are small fonts that are digitized specifically to be tiny. There are only 10 options, but they really come in handy when you are making small logos or need to have a smaller text for a project. The ones I use most in this section are Utah SR, Calgary Medium Italic SR, Script 01 SR, and Block 07 SR. The reason I use these fonts the most is because of the way they are digitized. Without this small font feature, to achieve this small thread or thin line look, you will have to create the words and individual letters using stitches or lines. Using these fonts gives you a much easier way to achieve this look. The other fonts in the small font section are similar to the regular fonts in that they are satin fonts. These work in such a small size because they are pre-digitized to have a low stitch density. I hardly use these because the styles are limited, and because you cannot adjust the sewing attributes or use the transform feature that are available in the regular fonts. In fact, you cannot use these features on any of these small fonts, even the ones I do use frequently. This can be a problem when you are trying to digitize a logo or make a design that has curved words. Instead, so that I can use these features, I cheat. I use the regular fonts and make adjustments so that they work in the smaller sizes. For this example, I'm going to use the regular text tool with the font block 01, which is a block font that I have found translates very well to being in a smaller text size. When I scale it down, the preset stitch density stays the same. This is what causes problems during stitch out. So using the sewing attributes tab, I normally drop the stitch density to 3.5 stitches per millimeter and change the pull compensation to 0.1. Now I have a small font that will stitch out nicely, and I can use the transform features to change the shape if I need to. Note that doing this will not work on all of the included regular text fonts. This is something you will need to be sure to test stitch to make sure that your font choice and the settings look the way you want them to before you stitch it onto your actual project. Let's move on to the monogram text tool, and once again start over with a new page. I use this tool all the time to make personalized gifts. You will notice in the font dropdown that there are two fonts with the special MG logo. These are specifically meant for monograms, but you will see below that you do have access to all of the other fonts that are included in the regular font tab. 
I am just going to go ahead and pick the diamond monogram font for now. If you are like me when I first started digitizing and aren't sure exactly how monogramming works, the order for a single person goes first name initial, last name initial, then middle initial. If you are doing a couple's monogram, the rule is her first initial, last name initial, then his first initial. Sometimes monogramming can get quite complicated, so if you have any questions, I will include a few links to some websites in the description below. Notice that when you enter in the initials, the monogram text tool will automatically create the monogram with the last name initial larger than the surrounding letters. This is the typical way that monograms are set up, and you don't have to do any adjusting. You can change the font type to any font and the results will be the same. The settings in the text attributes are limited to the kerning or spacing of the letters, but all the sewing attributes can be adjusted to what you think will look best on the project you are working on. It is always a good idea to get in the habit of double checking these sewing attributes because they do save based on the last project you worked on. I would like to take this time to remind you as well that the program does include some great pre-made designs that you can use to embellish your monograms. As I explained in the very first video, these can be found in the Imports tab on the right-hand docker. If you do not see the Imports tab here, you can find it by going to the View tab and selecting this checkbox. Use the From drop-down to find decorative patterns, then the Category drop-down for monogram decorations. If you find one you like, click and drag, double-click, or select and click Import. Then use the nodes around the design to make it to the correct size. Keep your eye on the design to make sure it does not get distorted. In my case, I ungrouped the two emblems using Control Shift G and regrouped them separately using Control G so I could space them correctly around my design. Then I used the Arrange tool to make sure they were lined up correctly. Lastly, I selected the whole thing grouped it all together, and to make sure everything was perfectly centered in my sewing area, I used the shortcut key Control M. Don't forget to save your design using Control S or this button. Let's clear the page again and talk about the last font tool, the user mapped text. For these fonts, I suggest we change the sewing field to a much larger hoop size. I'm going to pick the largest hoop available for my machine, which is the 8 by 16 inch or the 360 by 200 millimeter hoop size. The user mapped text only includes seven different fonts, but they are all very detailed and very large compared to the monogrammed and regular text fonts. I like to use these for personalizations on blankets, but will sometimes use them on towels as well. These fonts only work with capital letters, so I use them as initials. Aren't these fonts beautiful? My favorite one to use is this one that creates a split monogram. Simply add a written out name using the regular font tools to make it very easy and elegant design. Don't forget to double check your sewing attributes. Again, I like to select all, check the alignment, group, and make sure everything is centered in the sewing field. Be sure to save the design if you would like to give it a try. Before you try stitching up the user map text, I would like to point out that they show up in the sewing order as one big group, even when they include different colors. If your sewing order box doesn't look like mine, and you are seeing the text divided by individual letters and not grouped all in one line, you can change that by selecting this drop-down and choosing Show by Color Order. Because these fonts show up as one big block, it is hard to know what to order to stitch out your colors. So it is a good idea to create and print a color chart for the design. A quick reminder on how to do this is by clicking the flower or file button and selecting print. Here's what it looks like using the print preview. Remember you may need to change the print settings for the color chart to fit your personal preferences. To learn more about this, check out my first video. You can also use the stitch simulator to watch the design virtually stitch out to know which order the colors stitch out. So I feel like this video turned out a little shorter than the others I have made so far. But this is all I have for you today. There will be more videos on text in the future, so if you have any questions or ideas on font and text related topics, or any other digitizing topic for that matter, let me know in the comment section. As always, be sure to like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I come out with more videos.